Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my video and today I have something a little bit special to show you here. This is the just released JJRC JJ Pro P200, which as you can see here. So basically this is a 200 size quadcopter, so a pure X quad that is able to run five inch props. So let's just uh, take a look at the stats here. I'll have to flip the screen um, as you can see. Um, basically, it lays out the uh, 175 and the 200 version, so it has the Emacs Skyline uh, controller, or the F uh, flight controller, it's pretty good. It's got an 800 TVL CMOS camera, uh, CMOS is not very good with lighting. Uh, it's got some 5040 props, um, Emacs Lightning ESCs, I'm not sure if they're BL Heli S capable or not, and some uh, Emacs Red Bottoms RS 2205 2300 KV motors. So let's flip the screen back there. Hopefully that worked out. If not, I'll just cut it out and we'll get to that. Anyways, so let's open the box. Very nice, small, convenient box. And they use both the same box for the uh, 175 and the 200. So if you see either side, don't worry. Hopefully you got the one you ordered. And Gearbest sent this one out for me to review, so awesome of that. Got a little piece of foam up top here to keep everything protected. So let's remove that. Here is a little instruction manual, JJ Pro. So it looks like, yeah, the um, ready to fly version comes with a FlySky F, uh, FI6, I believe, or this transmitter, whatever one, it's pretty much the same one, just rebranded. Um, you know, it's a decent beginner one. And just give you some specs. I'll actually look through this. This looks pretty cool, um, how to assemble the camera mount here. Uh, everything actually looks really good. Lots of stats in here. Mixed Chinese, mixed English, but you know, should be decent enough. Okay, so first let's look, whatever this is. So this here is uh, three zip ties. I'm not sure what those are for, but they are with the camera assembly right here. So I assume that's what that's for. So here's some, it looks like steel bolts, maybe aluminum. We have two little red standoffs. Look, we have a couple little carbon pieces. I'm not going to open these right this moment. Um, I will assemble them later, uh, maybe in a little separate section. And then we do have two little battery straps. And interestingly enough, these say Nighthawk 170 on them. So perhaps they are repurposed. And then we do get a separate little instruction manual here um, on how to assemble it. But it was also noted in the main instruction manual. So let's get this. Let's see. Here we have a charger. Is there? Yep, there's a cable. Nothing else in that packet. And uh, just so you can see here, it's very well packed in foam, um, cut out foam. So it's very tightly, and this could be a very good trans transporting uh, case. You just have to take your props off. Here we have a little JJ Pro uh, charger, uh, B3. Uh, not a fan of these, you know. It's actually the first one I've had, but just, you know, it's how they work. Let's see, what is this outputting? Uh, uh, 800 milliamps, so your battery is probably going to take like two hours to charge and it just plugs into your uh, wall outlet. comes with a US plug on it and it has cell 1, 2, and 3 lights. So it is a 2 and 3S balance charger, but it's going to be very slow. But you know, it will at least get you in the air for a package like this if you don't have anything else. Let's take a look at this bag. I believe, yep, this should be the battery. So we have a JJ Pro branded. They really went out all out with the branding here on the bag. So let's open this up. It doesn't really need a bag, but you know, whatever. Perhaps they're trying to go with the Turnigy graphene look. So also, um, this is little red Velcro. It says uh, JJ Pro, probably a little battery strap, an extra one, because there's one on it, I believe. That's, you know, that's okay. And here we have the included battery. JJ Pro branded once again. It looks like it is a 1500 milliamp hour. So, you know, a little bit heavier in capacity, but that doesn't, it makes up for weight because this is indeed only a 3S 30C. <sighs> Come on, guys. 3S, really? You're trying to make a racer quad here. You're trying to make it, oh, look how fast it can go. It's total racer. And then you include a 3S. Like, seriously? I mean, this would be better for beginners, but, you know, a 4S, something like this, it really, it really wants a 4S. And I will uh, just get a quick weight on this battery with my scale here, and it is coming in at 128 grams. So, you know, a pretty decent light battery there. Uh, but I will not most likely, well, I will use it, I will tune it and just set it up and use this at first, but then I will definitely be switching to 4S. So I'll try to do a stock test and setup, but then I will make my mods and stuff to it. 
So back here we have some propellers. Let's see, there's two sets here. So let me open this. Okay, so here are the propellers. You get two sets. Um, one does not come with props on, so you get one replacement set. And these, uh, let's see, these are uh, two-bladed 5046 props, as you can see right there, 5046 bullnose. So these are bullnose, so they're not going to be very efficient. However, two-bladed props, uh, they look to be, and they definitely feel a lot like the uh, DAL props, so they're probably just kind of rebranded. Um, and they do have kind of the cool, like, digital camo look, and they do have several, uh, several colors available. But, you know, once again, two-bladed props. I will most likely, after I test it stock, I will be switching to three-bladed props, obviously, for, you know, better cornering and better handling. But, you know, it does come with props, once again. Let's see, in here, there's something back here. Okay, so here we have some prop nuts, and I've seen a couple of videos saying that these are actually um, really hard to get on, so I'll have to take, take a look, but let me, let me get the... Um, there's an antenna back here. So this is a FPV antenna, 5.8 gigahertz. Um, once again, I just noticed it has the Nighthawk branding on there. So I'm really, I'm kind of confused about this is a Nighthawk product and they just rebranded it JJRC. It didn't change some things. I don't know, but you know, it doesn't. It, it feels pretty solid. It's got a nice case on it there, and you have your. Uh, I believe this is. Uh, uh, let me let me check one second. Okay, after checking with uh, one of my Aonway antennas, because I just forgot, this is a SMA connector. Uh, it does have the uh, pin in it. RP SMA just has the hole. You can see this one has the pin. Um, and I do quite like these Aonway antennas, but, you know, they're exposed, so they can break the lobes pretty easily. So hopefully this one will go decent performance because it's very well protected. But, you know, I'm never too keen on these stock antennas. But, you know, I'll give it a try. And lastly, here we have the quad, and it's very tight in this uh, foam here. Let me pull it out. Okay, there we go. So let's just uh, put the box back. It's a pretty nice box. I, I do like this. It's very small and convenient and has a carrying case handle up top. So I'm just going to put that like that, and I'll move everything there. So here we have the quad. You can get a first look at this guy. And it definitely, let me go get a uh, ruler actually so we can measure this. Okay, so here we are. I've got my uh, little uh, old wooden ruler. It's kind of hard to measure this because of these feet on the motor guards here, but I will do my best. They're kind of in the way. Let me, let's see. It's going to be two, 200. It looks like it's almost 202 millimeters, but you know, that could be my measuring a little bit off. Um, so basically, yeah, it is a 200, and it is nice because it's a Purex, actually. Uh, let's just confirm it's a Purex by measuring motor to motor. So this is 143. 143, yep. So it is definitely a pure X, as you can see there. So it's 143 um, around all the edges. And that gives you kind of the top stack with the underslung battery. And one thing I noticed right away is this camera. Look at that up tilt. Obviously, you can change this, I hope. Okay, there we go. So that's, oops, that's actually the minimum up tilt you can get because of this little plate that's minimum up tilt. So that's probably 25 degrees there. I, I usually run with 35. I'm just making this little interjection to the video here because I did not notice it at the time. I'm um, talking about the camera tilt. I said that right there was the uh, least, the minimum you could do, which is about 30 degrees. However, if you move this little uh, power wire to the VTX to the side, oop, that's just the cap that came off, you can then pop the camera like that. So now it um, goes over the plate here, and now you have only about uh, 15 degrees tilt, 10, 15 degrees, so very tame, which would be good for a beginner. Obviously, you do want some tilt, but that's nice that the minimum can be there. Um, but you might be, if depending on what receiver you put in here, that might limit it as well. But I'm getting a Naked X4R SB, um, so it should be pretty thin. It might be able to fit under there, but I'm going to be running it with pretty high up tilt anyways, so it'll fit just fine in there. So, let's get back to the video. But uh, maximum, wow, that is like 70 degrees up tilt right there. 
So that's pretty nice, it's an adjustable. However, this is a 800 TVL, uh, I believe a CMOS camera, so it's not gonna perform as well in low light conditions as say a CCD camera. So, you know, that's uh, kind of a trade off, but the, once again, it is a cheap, uh, pretty cheap for what it is model. Um, out here on the motors, we have the awesome, awesome Emacs red bottom motors. So as you can see, hopefully, let me get it. Uh, can't can't get it uh, in the light. So maybe you can see that one. Yeah, it's not really focusing with the camera in this position, but they are the RS2205 2300 kV motors. If you can see that there, 2300 kV, and these will be spinning these five inch propellers and on a 200 frame, that's pretty impressive. I have seen all the way down to, I believe it's a one, the QQ, the quad question's 190, has managed to fit on there, but you can see very little, very little clearance there. Um, and these props spinning, but they do fit. And let's look, uh, prop to prop. So yeah, there we go, prop to prop's a little better. And then same there, since this is a X and true square. So let's move on, and then for the ESCs, we have the Emacs 20 amp uh, Lightning ESCs, and I believe the 35 amp Lightnings can run BL Heli S, but I've, I've been looking at these LEDs, and I can't find anywhere if they can run BL Heli S or not. So if they can, that would be super awesome, because for those of you who don't know, uh, BL Heli S is sort of like a new, uh, I don't know if it's software, or I believe it's software, on the ESCs and it's just so much smoother allows very low RPMs but these motors are great um, I run them on my custom built uh, ZMR X210 X210 here as you can see I run the red bottoms they've been very durable and very powerful for me and if we line them up you can see my 210 is just a little bit bigger but this is not a um, pure X like this is because of the middle plate so you can see but they're pretty similar in size so it's gonna be a nice comparison uh, so let's take a look up here. We have our VTX. You can see there's a nice little window up there and it has zip ties as well as a uh, double-sided sticky foam tape up there. So that's pretty nice mounting. Really nice that that came out of the factory. And then we do have the SMA connector up through the plate right angle here. So your frame is going to be grounded. However, I run once again my X210 I run grounded. You can see through the hole here and it doesn't affect it as long as you don't short it. So it's not really too big of a problem there. Uh, and then we have it soldered down. And because it's, because of the way it's protected by the frame, and there's a lot of carbon fiber up here, a lot of meat, I don't think that that's going to break off too easy. However, when you have your antenna up here, what's going to break is your antenna is going to break because it will bend. Ooh, this is a very stiff coaxial cable here. But I think the antenna is going to break before the plate and the mount there. So. You know, once again, trade-offs, and it looks like the top plate is two millimeters of carbon. Unfortunately, I don't have calipers, but um, that's what I read. And then down here, the arms, I believe they look, let me compare once again to my X210, because these are four millimeter. Let me line them up. Hold on, I gotta line these up so I can see. I can't do it on camera. Okay, after lining them up, these are definitely four millimeters. I couldn't, maybe they might have been like 3.8. I couldn't really get it lined up well, but they are very thick. They're probably four millimeter arms there. I think I read that on the site. And let's just take a look at the construction with the soldering here. Um, very nice soldering from the ESC, the power wires, to the power distribution board here. However, I'm not too big a fan of the power distribution board being part of the structural frame. So you can see here, especially with these front standoffs, um, this part in a crash, if you smash hard down, the PDB is the only thing here, and that's part of the frame. It might break off, so, you know, but there's actually nothing up there besides the buzzer. It does come with a little buzzer right here. And then inside, we have that Emax Skyline PDB, and I'm not sure what that heat sink underneath is because the VTX up top. Uh, I can't tell what that is right now. And then we have our little cable here to connect up your receiver through PWM, CPPM, or also known as PPM, and SBUS. I'm going to be running an SBUS. I have a naked uh, FreeSky X4RSB receiver on the way, which I will be running with my Tyrannus. And then we have our XT60 out the back. Interesting, it just uses these little right angle gold connectors. However, you can push up on this and it does move just a little bit. So if you have your battery, I'm not going to plug it in because my antenna's not on, but if you have your battery on under here, it'll give it more leverage. So 
you might actually be able to bend that up and snap that. So maybe a little bit of hot glue or a zip tie reinforcement around there would be nice. And then underneath we do have some LEDs here. And this little thing I saw, this is the battery, battery bay mounting because you do have to sling this one underneath. So let's just take, I'll be running either a 4S, well I'll be running 4S 1300 batteries, but either a normal nanotech or a graphene battery. From Hobby King I like to buy them. And uh, let's just stick this guy under here. And you'll notice real quick that um, this battery strap actually is, looks pretty nice. It's the same type as, the, I have these Lumineer ones. Um, these are pretty expensive and these have sort of a rubbery texture feeling to them and they stick very well to the batteries. And this Emacs part um, is sticking, feels very similar. But if you notice, there's actually, there's actually an arrow in the frame up here cut out. But uh, the bolts, it's just straight onto the bolts as well as straight onto this carbon fiber plate. And the bolts are going to push into your battery and maybe make a dent. And carbon fiber is pretty slippery by itself, so you're going to need to put some Velcro or some foam, something in between there to cushion the battery just a little bit to get it off those bolts, as well as to prevent it from sliding. I don't really understand the point of this plate because you can just run a strap, but I guess it will give you a little bit extra protection there. And it looks like I put the battery in backwards. So let's just spin this guy around. This is... So that'll be good enough for it now. So let's put the antenna on. Make sure you do not power this up without your antenna on. Because if you power it up without your antenna on, there's nowhere for this. Dang it, this stupid battery thing. I need to fix that soon. There's, I don't have it very tight though, by the way. Uh, there's nowhere for the power to go and it will fry your VTX. So before you ever power any of these things on, any VTX, make sure the antenna's on. So let's take this 4S battery. So it comes with 3S, but we're putting 4S because everything in here is rated to 4S. So... Let's plug this guy in. Okay, so try and cover the buzzer here. So the buzzer, since we're not bound, is going to be beeping like crazy, but it's very loud. So if you lose it, you can't, and it's nice that it's built in because you can set up a lost model alarm and some flight modes and stuff. You can see your LEDs back here. You have three blues. I'm not sure if they're configurable through clean flight or not, but, um, Let's just power that guy off real quick, and let me get my goggles here. So let me turn my goggles. These are the Quantum V2 with a Boscam FR632 receiver over here. So let's start auto scanning for the feed, and let's see if we get anything here. Okay, so I have my goggles here, and I now have a feed. Oh, the uh, lens cap is on, actually. I'm wondering why it was so blurry and stuff. So there we go. Let's get that here so you can see the... Um, hopefully you can see this well, the goggles. I do have a feed here. Um, doesn't look like there's really any latency, but it does almost look a little blurry. So we'll have to test this CMOS camera out more. Um, and looking at the VTX, I just saw something that was actually... Pretty interesting. If we, uh, geez, I hate this battery thing already. I gotta tighten that down. If we look up here, hopefully you can see it. It says 5.8 gigahertz, but 48 channels. As you can see there, hopefully 48 channel VTX. So this does include a race band, if I am not mistaken, which is pretty nice there. So and there is up here these slots. Uh, as you can see, the slots there are going to be for your. Uh, the mount, if you want to mount something like a GoPro a camera up here, I'm going to be mounting my SJ5000X up top. As you can see there, it'll the mount will be able to tilt back. And let me actually weigh this thing. So let's get it up here. And let's just stick the props on real quick. Just because. And then we're not going to have the receiver or the bolt weight, but it'll be close enough. So... Weighing it like this, we get 337 grams. And then putting the stock LiPo on there, we get 467. And then putting, oops, let's put the stock LiPo back on and a GoPro camera. Now we have uh, 541 grams, so not too bad there. But once we put the graphene LiPos, these are very heavy, but they're very powerful, we get 515 grams. Then with the camera, we get 589 grams, so that's actually not too bad. My um, 
ZMRX210 with my SJ cam and the same graphene battery. I get about 620 grams, so this is a little bit lighter, but we still have the receiver and a few bolts to go, so. But that's just a pretty general weight, and it's obviously way over the FAA limit of 250 grams. So you're gonna have to register if you agree with that policy. So let's see. Um, hmm. The uh, one thing I just noticed actually the uh, wires here you can see running out of the ESCs. They've actually they've run the signal wire to this pad here, but they haven't run the ground. As you, hopefully you can see they actually cut the ground off, and that's the same for all the ESCs. They cut the ground wire from the ESC, not the power, but the signal and ground. And there is a signal pad over here, so it's, I don't know why they didn't run the ground, because that could cause some issues sometimes. But hopefully it doesn't right now. Um, it shouldn't, because they've already tested this and it works fine, so, you know. And then the ESCs are just mounted with some double-sided sticky tape. And one thing about these little lock nuts, I've heard that they are very tight. They're almost the, raw, the two, uh, wrong size. However, if I put these on, let's, let's find the one I did, because I already had... While I was looking for something, I tested this because I was really curious. Uh, let's see if this is the right motor. Nope, these are self-tightening, um, so you have to. They only fit on the correct motor, counterclockwise and clockwise. So, because of these motor guards here, they are uh, injected molded plastic, not uh, 3D printed, and they used four screws here. Um, you can't really grab the motor at all. You have to. You only have up here. So, getting these uh, lock nuts on. Let me just get uh, one second here. Okay, so to get the lock nuts on, um, you can see I just normally use this little 8mm hex wrench, um, but there's just not, and I've already broken this one in, the uh, nylon threads, because they come solid, but once you screw it on, it gets a little easier. So if I pinch really hard, I can get it on, but it's becoming very tight, so i found that if you take pliers, hopefully you can see this, and there are cooling fans on these motors, you can see the little holes, if you take the pliers and put them right here, now these are a kind that will, um, they adjust the grip, this little mechanism here, so I recommend those over straight needle nose. And if I grip the uh, two, in between the two fans, I can grip the motor very well. Actually, let me, um, hold on, let me get this nut off. Okay, here we go, so let's just put a prop on, correct orientation, and let's just spin this down right there. Now I will grip the two little things, and then if we tighten this up like this, you can see, now, oops, my uh, wrench came off. I'm now able to tighten this nut correctly right there, and now our prop is very securely on. It's not just, you know, spinning on there, um, and I wasn't, I didn't cause any damage to the motor there, just pinching in between those two fans. So a couple of people have been saying that they got the wrong size nuts, and you know, who knows, perhaps they could have. But for mine, that's all I had to do. They are very tight because, you know, just the brand new, the nylon threads in here aren't, is this one broken? No, this one's not. They're just not broken in, so they're tough. And then combined with the uh, motors, you can only grip from right here. It feels like they're wrong, but mine were correct. So let's just get this off. And you have to do it once again to get it off. So it will get easier with time, but it is kind of disappointing. But, you know, you can take the motor guard off. You um, could be able to if you just take the screws off underneath, these four little screws. But then you're... Uh, your screws would probably be too long, they'd probably be touching your uh, motor windings. Okay, so let me just uh, take a quick look and see if I missed anything and we'll sum this unboxing and quick look up. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention about the VTX is there's a little window for viewing the uh, band or the channel up here and it glows blue, that's pretty nice. My other one glows red on my X210. And then this little hole with this button up here this little switch, if I can get it to focus there, is for changing the um, band. So if you have a bunch of people racing or you are you know, you don't want to be on the same channel, it won't work. So you can change it there. So nice little cutouts. Nothing looks too, fra um, too fragile to me if I pull the arms. <coughs> there's nothing flexing there. There's the 4 millimeter arms and then there's this 1.5 millimeter base plate that's help protecting there and this one's 1.5 I believe. And the PDB looks like it's one millimeter and the top plate is two. So, you know, it's pretty solid overall. And I was 
you know, this, I'm glad they didn't like this uh, the, um, antenna holder placement here for the um, antenna. It's not just a little, let me show you, like on my X210, you're supposed to put it through this little hole. And this thing, like if you can see, it just snaps right off. There's just like such little material there. So I am happy that this is nice and beefy around here. But it would be nice to see the antenna sticking out like this, perhaps, because a lot of people run like that, like if you stick it out. And this one, this model is almost ready to fly, so it requires your receiver, which will go in here on top of this little carbon plate. And like I said, I'll be getting an X4R receiver. So that really concludes this video, the unboxing and quick look of the JJRC JJ Pro P200, which is their new 5-inch quadcopter meant for beginner racing, but it has some pretty serious components on here. The red bottoms are some serious stuff. They're awesome. And like I said, I will be setting this up in future videos, configuring this using the stock two-blade propellers, as well as the stock uh, 3S battery. However, once I'm done with that and I've tuned it up and I've done videos on that, I'm going to go full out on this thing. I'll be putting on some tri-blade props, my 4S batteries, and I'll be upgrading well, I'll probably do it on the 3S2. I'll be using Betaflight 2.90 setting. I'll show you how to make this thing act like a real quad should, like the um, ZMR X210 here with my actual freestyle quad that I have right now. So I'll be making it, and I'll be able to compare it to that because this is a little bit lighter, but it should fly pretty much the same, you know, besides the flight controller being a little bit different. Um, so that was the end of the video here. So hopefully you like that, and it you know, it was helpful to you if you get this. Once again, more videos coming soon with uh, setup and everything. And I'll leave a link down below to check out my Patreon if you wish if you uh, wish to support the channel and help me contribute. I want to say a big thanks once again to uh, Gearbest for help, uh, getting this out to me to review. Really interested in this model. It looks like they really have some nice components on here. A couple things I'm not too happy about, but you know, overall it looks like this could be once with a few changes. This could be pretty pretty serious for the price. So stay tuned for more. Please subscribe if you aren't already. Keep them flying. And as always, see you in the next video. Bye.